shadow knows. <laughs> Your local blue coal dealer presents The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before The Shadow's adventure begins, here's news that no homeowner can afford to miss. When you order fuel, remember that there's a tremendous difference between various kinds of anthracite. And remember that there's only one trademarked anthracite, blue coal. Blue coal is a superior quality fuel, a guaranteed product of the world's largest hard coal producer. So when you call and ask for blue coal by name, you're assuring yourself of better heat at less cost. Why not order your supply from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow? <laughs> The shadow, a mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. His friend and companion, Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs, the only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the shadow. Today's story, Death is Blind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you just see my pretty outside. Come on, Lamont. If I have to inspect another blue ribbon pig or prize pumpkin pie, I think I'll think. <laughs> Nonsense, Margot. We've hardly seen anything yet. I thought the dignified Lamont Cranston would go crazy about a county fair. No, Margot, you don't begrudge me a little relaxation, do you? Relaxation? Isn't it enough you're leaving tonight for a week's hunting trip by yourself? I should think that would be enough relaxation for anybody. Well, maybe you're right at that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, now, Lamont, that's just a shooting gallery. You've seen shooting galleries before. <laughs> Come on, Margot. You can just walk by it anyhow. Oh, Lamont, you're incorrigible. All right, I'm with you. Hey, watch him shoot. That guy's a sharpshooter. Hey! hey. Did you see that shot? He had his back to the target. He shot over his shoulder, looked in the mirror. Boy, that's some joke. Oh, oh, oh. What's going on? I can't see over these people. <laughs> you need to get into today, Margo. Oh, come on. Let's try to get closer. Heavens, what a crowd. Right. Let's squeeze in here now. Yeah, that's right. Now, can you see? Yes, perfectly. Oh, it must be the boy standing by the counter there who's been doing this miraculous shooting. Look. Look, he's going to shoot again. The man behind the counter is handing him another gun. Hey, Arthur, wouldn't you like to try another shot? Oh, gee, I don't believe so. I'm oh, sorry, well, but... Walter, oh. do not go. Well, Dr. Layden, I didn't know you were here. I've been in the crowd watching. I'm proud of you, Walter. What I've just seen you do is a credit to my teaching. Oh, thank you, Dr. Layden. Lamont, that old man with a hunchback, the one the boy calls Dr. Layden. Yes, what about it? Oh, I don't know. There's something I... I think it's his eyes. Well, you know who he is, don't you? Should I? Who is he? There's pictures in the papers occasionally. That's Dr. Franz Layden. Head of the research laboratories of the Jordan Process Company. They're plants in this town. I don't care who he is. That face is... It's evil, Lamont. He, he gives me the shivers. Let's go. Go quiet. I want to hear this. Yes, but Dr. Layden, I ought to go home. You see, my mother... Did not yet, Walter. Now, did I understand you to say, sir, that you're responsible for this boy's remarkable skill with a pistol? Yes, I think I can say I am in a way. He had the natural instincts himself, of course, but I helped him develop them. You see, Walter has not only the perfect eye, but the perfect ear. It is a rare gift. Ear? Yeah? What's the ear got to do with marksmanship? I will demonstrate. Uh, Walter? No, no, please, Dr. Walter, Layden. you will do as I say? Yes, Dr. Layden. Now, I take this handkerchief, oh, sir. Lamont. He's blindfolding the boy. Yeah, I wonder just what... Now, he is completely blindfolded. He can see nothing. Can you, Walter? No, Dr. Layden. The boy will now give you a demonstration of marksmanship that I bet you have never seen before, nor will see again. Uh, give him the loaded pistol. Hey, oh, 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 here, here, now, wait a minute. We have conducted this experiment safely many times before. Well, all right. Here's the gun. Uh, take it, Walter. Uh, that's right. Now, this blindfolded boy, unable to see anything at all, will shoot once... And hit the bullseye of that target. Oh, yeah. George, 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 yeah. Calm yourselves, everybody. There is no danger. Well, how's he going to know which direction to shoot in? That's where the ear comes in. Uh, you take this cane of mine, stand by the target, and when I give you the signal, strike the gun in the center of the target with the cane. The sound of the gun will give Walter his cue. His ear will give him the direction. And his shot will hit the bullseye. Ah, With me standing there, huh? Not on your life. The guy's good, but how do I know he's that good? You doubt my word? Well, mister, I don't say I doubt it, but if he's going to play William Tell, he can do it with somebody else. 
Ah, you are cowards, all cowards. I will strike the gun. I said. Are you ready, Walter? Yes, I'm ready. Good. I will strike the gun. Bullseye blindfold! Impossible! I was shot! Uh, you see, what did I tell you? He struck the bullseye blindfolded. Now, do you doubt my word? Come on, Margo. Let's go. It's about time. Margo. Do you realize how powerless the shadow would be against a boy like that? Yes, I know, and just as the boy was about to shoot, did you see that old man? He was trembling, and his face was white as a mask. Yes, I noticed that. Definitely not nice. I wonder what it means. I don't know. This way, Margo. Here's the car. Oh, now you're the one who's in a hurry. You've got plenty of time to get back to town and pack. The train doesn't leave till half past nine. I know. I may have something else I want to do first. Something else? What? I knew definitely, I tell you, Margo. Offhand, it looks as if the shadow... The shadow? Now, Lamont, when you agreed to take this hunting trip, it was to be an absolute rest. And you promised me you'd forget all about the shadow for a week at least. I know. That's just what I intend to do. But before I go... Yes? Well, before I go, I think the shadow is going to imitate our young friend Walter back there and take a shot in the dark. <laughs> Dr. Layton. Hey? I just wanted to ask whether you need me here in the laboratory anymore tonight. Walter, don't you know enough not to talk to me when I'm engaged in an experiment? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I just thought that... Oh, no, no, don't pay any attention to me, my boy. When I'm absorbed in my work, I'm afraid I may be a little irritable. Well, I do my best, sir. Yes, I know. I know, my boy. You are a great help to me, Walter. I picked you especially from over a thousand applicants to train and research work. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. If I interrupted your experiment, I... That's all right, my boy. The experiment is worthless anyhow. And you run along home and don't think too harshly of me for my little outbreak. Oh, I won't, sir. You know I won't. You've been wonderful to me, giving me this opportunity to study under your direction. Gee, I only hope that well, I... Don't worry, my boy. As I just said, you're invaluable to me. And I think in the future, you're going to be more so. Well, I appreciate that, sir. Good night, Dr. Lake. Good night, my boy. You know I'd do anything in the world for you and the Jordan Company. For me and the Jordan Company. The Jordan Company. Bah! A group of hot belly capitalists living off someone else's brains. If it hadn't been for me, there would have been no Jordan process. I made the Jordan Company, and they take it away from me because they have money and I have none. They have the fine homes and the expensive cars, while I am left to rot in this laboratory where nobody ever comes. Nobody even knows I'm here. But soon, soon my revenge will come, and no one will suspect. And what is it? <laughs> Who laughs? Don't you know me, Dr. Layton? Know you? How should I know you? Who are you? Many people would like to know, Doctor. But for want of a better name, they call me the Shadow. Shadow? What is this childish hocus-pocus? Others have called it childish hocus-pocus of the past, Doctor. They have lived to regret it. Are you trying to threaten me? No, Doctor. Not threaten. Warn. Is the better word. They're trying to warn me? Warn me against what? I believe you know as well as I do. Oh, you know nothing. You can't. Don't try to stop me. I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps not, Doctor. But don't forget. I shall be watching you. A man. I shall be watching you. <laughs> They're after me. Everybody's after me. They're spying on me. Well, I must hurry. Or it will be too late. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, Dr. Layton. I was just passing the door on my way out, and I thought I heard you say something. Were you calling me? Oh, yes, Walter. Oh, I'm glad you're still here. I'm afraid you won't be able to go home right away after all. Is there something you want me to do? Yes, there's a particular experiment I want to make. I was going to put it off for a few days, but I think I'd better do it tonight before I forget. <laughs> Wouldn't you to forget? Would it, Walter? No, sir. That's right. You're a good boy, Walter. A very good boy. Now, uh, let me see. A little of this powder in the retort. Then a pinch of the... Uh, uh, nice the Bunsen burner water. Yes, sir. There. We're almost ready. We fill the retort with this liquid. Now we put it over the flame. You watch this water. When it boils, let me know. I will prepare the other ingredient. Uh, is there anything else I can do to help Dr. Layton? No, 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 thank you, my boy. Just watch that liquid. 
and want to know as soon as it boils. Can't afford to let any of it boil away, you know. Yes, sir. I'm watching. It's boiling now, sir. Good. Good. Now, the success of this experiment depends on you. What do you want me to do? I have here a certain powder. I want you to take this powder, and when I give you the word, drop it into that boiling liquid. Oh, I see, sir. Wait, now that is not all. If you drop the powder in, I want you to observe closely what changes occur in the liquid. Well, that doesn't sound very difficult. Ah, it is more difficult than you think because of my calculations are correct. Those changes will be very minute, hardly visible to the naked eye. My eyes are bad. That's why I want you to watch. Well, I'll watch very carefully, sir. My eyesight's very good. Almost as good as your hearing aids. Now, when I give you the word, drop the powder. And don't take your eyes off that liquid. Are you ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Go ahead, then. We continue with the second part of the Shadow's thrilling adventure in just a moment. Meantime, a question. Men, wouldn't you like to end those tiresome trips to the furnace for your wife or other members of the family... Wouldn't you like to know that when you fix the furnace and leave the house in the morning, the fire would burn steadily throughout the day and give more even, more dependable, and more useful heat? If you want that kind of time and trouble-saving performance from your fuel, then insist on blue coal when you order anthracite. Blue coal is different from any other anthracite. It's a medium, pre-burning hard coal. That means it will burn steadily and more evenly, right down to a fine, powdery ash. With blue coal, there's far greater all-around economy. There's less heat lost up the chimney, far less wasted, unburned coal in your ash pit. And, too, you'll find that blue coal requires less furnace attention. It's carefully sized so that it banks better, burns better, and can be handled far more easily. Furnaces in this part of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So if you want America's finest anthracite, order blue coal. Then you'll be sure to get better heat at less cost. Call your blue coal dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name listed in the gratified section of your classified telephone directory under the words Blue Coal. Play safe. Don't take chances with ordinary anthracites. Save money with Blue Coal, the only trademarked anthracite. It's the solid fuel for solid comfort. Order your supply tomorrow. Oh, yes, Gates. Come in, come in. Sorry to bother you at home like this, Dr. Layden, but I wanted to see you about that unfortunate boy, Walter Dunn, who was injured in your laboratory several days ago. Well, what about him? Well, as personnel manager of the Jordan Company, I'm especially concerned about the boy. I understand at the hospital that the poor fellow will be totally blind for life. Too bad, but accidents will happen. We're uh, paying all his hospital and doctor's bills, of course, and... In addition, the directors had a meeting today, and they thought it was only right for the company to make some provision for the boy's future. And Mr. Gilmore, the president of the company, thought that perhaps you could suggest what's the best thing to do. Oh, Mr. Gilmore thought that, did he? Well, Mr. Gates, I'll tell you what I'd advise the company to do in the case of Walter Dunn. And what's that? Exactly nothing. But... Dr. Layden, surely you Suppose would... I were to tell you that Walter Dunn was a worthless, no-good scoundrel, that I caught him making tracings of various things I was working on here in the laboratory with the intention of selling them to our competitors. Well, you... you can't be serious. I never was more serious in my life. The boy spied on me. He spied on me, I tell you. Luckily, I discovered him before he could do any great damage. Well, of course, what you told me alters the situation considerably, Dr. Layden. Yes, I thought it might. Well, I hardly think it would be necessary for the company to take any further responsibility for what it done. I'm sorry to have to bring this up when the boy is in such trouble. But after all, my first loyalty is to the Jordan Company. Eh, Gates? <laughs> the officers are such a splendid group of men. <laughs>
Thank you, Dr. Lake. Now is a good time for life, Walter. We must try to be a good doctor. Blind. I'm blind. Yes, and I'm afraid it's going to be very difficult to get along with your mother's support. I know it. Of course, the company should have made some provision for your future. After all, if they hadn't supplied the laboratory with inferior chemicals, that explosion never would have happened. You told me all that before. I'm repeating it so you know that what you're going to do is... What I'm going to do is best. Exactly. Remember, I went to Mr. Gilmore, the president, and to the directors myself and pleaded with them. But to no avail. They absolutely refused to help you. They refused to help me. I'll show them. I'll show them. Oh, get excited, Walter. My boy, Jerry. Where are they? I'll show them. I wouldn't be surprised if we met Mr. Gilmore coming along here any minute now. He generally walks home from his club this way about this time. And he speaks to Jerry. I'll show them. Ah, here comes somebody now. Ah, it is Mr. Gilmore, Walter. The man who wouldn't help you. Now, I'll just sit behind the street. And don't forget to put the gun in his hand. Afterward? I won't forget. Good. Good. Oh, pardon me. Yes, young man? Could you please tell me the time? I'm blind, you see. And, uh... Why, of course. Hey, aren't you all <laughs> Hello. What's the idea of waking me up at this? What's that? Gilmore's committed suicide. Good Lord. Special director's meeting tonight at the Jordan Company. Yes, yes, I'll get dressed and come right down. Gilmore shot himself. I can't believe it. That. Well, I heard a tap on the window. Imagination, I guess. Oh, Gilmore. Where did I put my shoes? Hold on. I did hear something at the window. Can't see anything, though. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm coming. Don't be so impatient. Well, what do you. Walter Dunn, what was it? I feel that way myself. Well, anything out of the ordinary is going to happen? Well, nothing much except a lot of strangers are going to suicide. Seems as if the directors of the company all got tired of life at the same time. Epidemic of suicide? It's not by any chance the Jordan process. Why, why, yes. How did you know it was the Jordan process? Jordan, what do I suppose that came to? A county fair, an old hunchback with a face you didn't like. The boy shot you. Of course. Why am I so stupid? But tell me, Lem, what do you know about these suicides, Margot? Was there any significant fact connected with all of them? I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. I did notice something that was too. Each suicide shot himself through the mouth. Margot, a week ago, the shadow warned a certain man on the telephone. I see now that one warning was not enough. Your suicides were not suicides. What do you mean, Margot? I mean this, Margot. When a man is going to shoot himself, he doesn't do it through the mouth. There's something about looking into the black muzzle of a gun that seems to deter even an unbalanced mind. One of these men might have done it that way, certainly not all. No, Margot, they didn't commit suicide. They were murdered. <laughs> Street. Uh, this must be the place. Let's stop the car. Yes, right, Mark. Yes. You want to come in? He's calling on the Mark. Blind boy. Yes, yes, I'll come in. Right, Mark. Uh, I guess this thing's the bell. What do you want? Does Walter Dunn live here? 
find his mother, but he ain't in. You don't know where I could find him? No, I don't. He's probably off somewhere with that lady man. Do you mean Dr. Lady? That's the one. Ever since he got, got hurt, well, Walter's always with him. It seems like he... Who are you, from the company? No, I, I'm a newspaper man from the city. Well, I can't tell you anything. Come on, Margot. It's all here. She'd been crying when Mother eyes were all red and swollen. Yes. She's probably suffering as much as water. Margo, do you remember that afternoon at the fair, what you said about Dr. Layden? I said he had an evil face. Lots of people have evil faces. I mean, some awfully nice people sometimes. Dr. Layden is not a nice person, Margo. I knew that when I first saw him. He has the face of a man suffering from an inner torture. A torture so all-consuming that when he's not on guard, it shows through his eyes. Torture and hate. The monster, you mean you think that Walter Dunn is under the influence of Dr. Layden? Oh, that's fantastic. You've no evidence. Haven't I? Don't forget, Margot, these murdered men were all shot in the mouth. Well? If you were blind and had to rely on sound to guide you to the target, and a man spoke to you, you would shoot him in the mouth. What are you going to do? I'm going to pay a little call on the eminent Dr. Layden as the shadow. The Mark, you can't call on Dr. Layden. If Walter is with him, your invisibility won't help you. By the minute you speak, Walter can kill you as he's killed the others. I fully realize that possibility, Margo. The shadow must take that chance. Well, Walter, things are coming along splendidly. Yes, Dr. Layden. With all the executives committing suicide. Our own special brand of suicide, eh, Walter? The company's stock is up to nothing. Soon I will have control. I, Dr. Franz Leiden, the despised old crank hustling around in his laboratory. <laughs> yes, Dr. Leiden. Oh, the country police are stupid. They suspect nothing. It's a wonderful scheme, Walter. A brilliant scheme. Nobody could see through it. <laughs> Nobody, Dr. Leiden. Who speaks? Walter, the door is open. I closed it. I'm sure I closed it. Don't get up, Doctor. I'll close it again. There. Who is it, Dr. Layden? I, I don't know. I can't see him. Can't see him? Are you blind too, Doctor? No, 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 I'm a blind but, but you can't see me, is that it, Doctor? I don't know. What it tell me? There is someone in this room, is there not? Yes, Doctor. He's standing right near you. His voice comes from there. Who are you? A disembodied spirit speak. We have talked before, Dr. Layden. I am the shadow. Shadow? Though you cannot see me, I am here. Doctor, I'm afraid your little game is up. Walter, this man, this Dr. Layton... Shot him, Walter. Yes, but only in the arm. Listen, Walter. Shoot him again, Walter. Shoot him again. Walter, stop. Listen to me. Dr. Layton has made a catch for you. Shoot again, Walter. Shoot again, you fool. Walter, listen to me. Layton lied when he told you the company wouldn't take care of you. They planned to provide for you and your mother for life. No, no I don't believe it. Wait, don't shoot. I'm telling you the truth. Dr. Layton has tricked you from the beginning. Has deliberately plotted that you commit the crimes he had the nerve to carry out himself. He's lying. Shoot, Walter. Shoot. Walter, listen. Would a chemist as brilliant as Dr. Layton have an accidental laboratory explosion? Shoot, Walter, you fool. Walter, you've got to believe me. He deliberately blinded you. You deliberately blinded me! No! No, Walter! My word of honor! Walter! No! so foolish. I believed you and trusted him. You... You... I, I shot you! I am not badly hurt, Walter. You better put that gun down now. What are you going to do? I'm afraid I'll have to send for the police. For oh, the police? No! No, I know the best way! <laughs> Justice has been triumphant again. It's horrible that a fine young boy like Walter Dunn should have to come under the influence of a man like me. But the near guilty must suffer with the guilty. Law and order must prevail. (laughs) 